we are in module five of the intelligent sales machine program at this point in time you're ready to get your eyes and hands on a sample of your product before you take the final step of placing your first order we will start with the objectives of this phase in this module you'll learn how to organize a product sample as well as how to test the item once it arrives to you decide on allow for and source a suitable product bonus once you've completed that step I'll help you determine what type of investor you will be. In other words, you look at the capital you have at your disposal and ascertain how much of that you want to invest. Once you know how much of your capital you're prepared to put into play, I'll then show you how to negotiate a trial order with your supplier. Then I'll show you how to create our brands as well as teach you how to make a simple product label and how to apply that label to the product. I'll finish off this module by finalizing your product packaging before we move into the final step of actually placing your order in the next module. We are very, very close to getting the first item or items into stock and selling. So keep taking massive action and you'll be amazed at the results. Let's start then by diving into what product samples are and how we get them from the supplier. The first and most obvious reason that we must bring in a sample of every product that we intend to sell is the fact that a product sample is the only way we can get hands-on experience of the product that we're intending to sell. Sampling allows us to test the supplier too. It's always good to do this early on to get an indication as to the quality of your supplier's operating systems, as well as seeing how they operate when it comes to payment and communication. Now when you're ordering, make certain that you order at least two units of each product. Why? Because we want to be able to test one unit against another. It helps us see if the items are of consistent quality and operate consistently as well. Not only do we want to order two units of each product, we actually want to order two units from at least two suppliers. Again, this is to test their product quality, their communication, and their operating procedure. So then, how do samples actually work? Well, it's actually very simple. The first thing you're going to do after you've confirmed the economics behind the item is to email your supplier to request samples of the item or items that you're looking at. Samples will generally be dispatched by the supplier. Usually they utilize their own FedEx DHL courier account to ship the items to you. Now some suppliers may not have a courier account of their own. If that's the case, then you would generally ship the item using your own courier. All you'll do in this case is speak to FedEx or DHL or any one of the many courier companies that ship from China and arrange for them to collect the item from your supplier and deliver to you. Your freight forwarder may also be able to ship this for you via air. This is certainly worth checking when you begin to work with a freight forwarder a little later on in this program. In terms of the payment for samples, they're generally paid for by you and oftentimes they can work out to seem relatively expensive. For example, the cost price of the item is $5, but they might charge you $50 for the sample. The best advice here is not to allow the cost to put you off ordering the sample. When you consider that over the next 3, 5 or 10 years, you'll be ordering thousands of these items and making significant profit on every sale, that small $50 cost doesn't seem so much at all. Certainly if a sample helps you avoid bringing in an item that will eventually become unsellable due to poor quality, you'll quickly see the benefit in ordering a sample despite the cost. It's simply a cost of doing business and not a particularly high one at that. Now the shipping can double in cost as you're ordering such a small number of units from the supplier and shipping them a long way via air. But the samples will arrive in a matter of days from the time they're dispatched by the supplier. And because you're using a courier, you'll be able to track the items the entire way from source to your location. So here's the process step by step. The first thing you're gonna do is to request samples from your supplier as we already mentioned. You'll then receive a purchase invoice or PI from the supplier. Once you receive this, you'll arrange to pay the supplier for the samples you've agreed to. The supplier will then ship the samples to you via the agreed method, that is their courier or yours. Finally, after a few days of travel, you receive the samples and will proceed with testing the sample quality. Now, you may be wondering, how do I pay for the samples? And if so, don't worry because I've got you covered. There are two primary methods to utilize when paying for samples. PayPal, in my opinion, is the best option and the most desirable for you. The reason is that it's simple to use, it's secure, and if you never receive the samples, you can open a case against the seller in PayPal to help you recover your costs. Also, the fees are relatively low, and as a result, it's perfect for small, fast transactions like this. Now, you'll never pay for an entire order here, but it's ideal for samples. The other method is a bank transfer, also known as a bank wire. This is also fine, but it may be less cost-effective 
as the fees here are generally fixed. Say, for example, that you're sending $100. Well, the cost might be, for example, $20 to send that payment. Whereas with PayPal, you might pay $2 or $3. Bank wires are secure once you've made certain that your supplier's details are 100% correct. Always be cautious, but not fearful when sending bank wires. Be aware of what you're doing, but don't be afraid to do it. Samples have a cost, but so too do the mistakes of not having received them. Let's talk about some of them, just to drive this point home and make certain that you never avoid this critical step. The first reason is, of course, importing and selling an inferior product. This, quite simply, is going to cause you issues with your Seller Central account. Seller Central is the place where you run your business on Amazon. It's not worth having a poor product drag your account down just because you didn't want to pay $50 or $100 for a sample. Second, you may receive a product that is not as described. This leads to customer complaints, which in turn leads to problems with your Amazon seller account. Not sampling an item may result in you disposing of the product completely. Again, this is linked to a product that's inferior or isn't as described. This is a very costly thing to have to do. The cost isn't just the cost of throwing out the item, but it's also the opportunity cost that will result from all the missed sales you'll experience now that you, your item is no longer available for sale. Finally, think of sampling as protecting your investment. It's worth investing a little upfront to protect yourself in the long run. Okay, so the final thing you might be wondering about is whether or not we have a specific way that we test our items. And I can tell you that the answer is yes, we certainly do. Here is our method for you to swipe and deploy in your own business. The first thing we're gonna do is to look back at our Amazon review mining exercise from earlier to locate the specific things that were wrong with our competitors' products. We'll use these complaints as a basis for our test. When we receive the item, the first thing to do is to test the product's core operation. In other words, does the item do what it's supposed to do reliably and consistently? We'll get a feel for this by simply using the product as a consumer would. Once we've confirmed that the item works as it's supposed to, we'll make sure that the negative complaints our competitors' items received aren't present in our sample. If you remember our pool rake example from earlier, one of the complaints was that the item's mesh basket ripped easily. We'd want to test that rigorously to confirm that our item has a better quality mesh basket. Test every single negative that you've identified and take notes of any issues you see that you will later raise with the supplier. Repeat these tests with both your sample items from each supplier a few times to make sure that the item doesn't break after a few uses. You can also give the item to a friend or family member to use to test it even further. And that's about it for our testing process. It's simple but very reliable. Now if you're happy with the sample item, simply proceed with the supplier who you're happiest with thus far. Simple as that really. I'll teach you the next steps in this process in this module's remaining videos. If on the other hand you're not happy with the item, you can either find a new supplier or a new product. Remember, you should have discussed this item with at least two suppliers. Also, if you find certain elements that you're unhappy about, you can raise these with your supplier and ask them if they can fix these issues and send you new samples. To be honest though, if the item isn't good enough at this point, I would recommend moving on for now while you're just starting out.